talk to you about Nehemiah, and one of the greatest qualities about Nehemiah that I noticed in the passage that I have is his selflessness. But before I jump into Nehemiah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal something about about myself that might come to shock. I am pretty stinking selfish, and I'm just gonna be honest with that. <laughs> and it's I don't understand why I am because it's not like my mom and dad were you know stingy and rude about. It. They are two of the most generous people I've ever known in my entire life. Um, maybe it has something to do with that I'm the youngest child, my sister's 10 years older than me, my brother's 7 years older than me, and so I'm just used, to, I was kind of raised like an only child, so maybe I'm just used to being the spoiled one and my brother and sister being constantly mad at me that I got everything. It's, it's been great. Uh, but it's, just, it's hard for me to share. I, one of the, the one things uh, that I just cannot stand sharing is my food. I do not share food <laughs> at all. <laughs> and I had I had friends in high school that my mom packed my lunch all through all grades, like elementary, junior high, high school, and my mom packed amazing lunches. <laughs> and she would even give me extra food to give to my friends because they knew, like she knew that they wanted um, like the extra brownies or whatever. I wouldn't give them to them. I would eat them. I'd be like, are you kidding me? I'm not sharing. I'm like, this is my food. I had friends like begging me to trade and like offering good stuff to trade for like, I'll give you this pretzel and cheese if you give me a brownie, just one brownie for a pretzel and cheese. And I'm like, no, I, like this is my food. I don't share. I hate when people ask me for gum. I'm not just gonna say, I, I hate sharing gum. I'm like, no, I lie. I'm like, no, I don't have any. And even though I'm like chomping on a huge piece in my mouth and I have a full pack in my purse, I'm like, oh, I don't have any on me. I'm like, it's not on me. Technically, I'm not lying. It's in my purse. And it just, it drives me nuts. I, I seriously, I don't, I don't know what my issue is. Well, things start, I'm not as bad as I used to be. Well, I don't know. You can ask Logan later if I am. But it started changing my life. My brother, like I said, my brother and sister are a lot older than me. And so they started having kids. They have, I have six nieces and nephews, and they're seven and under. So when they were first born, I was always around babysitting. And, and when you're with little kids, they constantly want what you have. <laughs> and they will come up, and they just open up their mouth. And you know, they're like little birds, like waiting. And I'm like, I don't want to give you my food. And especially because it was like desserts. That's the one thing they really were always like, I want, I want, I want. And so I started to relax slightly on, okay, I'll share my food, because I want to set a good example for my nieces and nephews. And then once I entered into full-time ministry, if you haven't experienced it yet, you really have got to learn to die to self and not be selfish when you're with ministry with students. One of the top things I hated doing, I still struggle with this, is giving rides to people. I, I don't know why. I just... Yeah, I don't like giving rides to people. And But with junior high students, which I was a junior high pastor for five years, they can't drive, and if you want them to be at events, you have to go get them and or take them home. So I usually would devise up a plan like, you get here, I'll take you home, or vice versa, so I wouldn't have to do all the driving all the time. And then the ultimate one that has helped me to learn to be less selfish was getting married last year. And for some of you who are married, you know this, that you really can't be as selfish as you would like to be. And if you are, it's going to cause some issues. <laughs> like, there's definitely been some food issues in our house, because like I said, I don't like to share. And I give Logan time frames of, I make certain desserts or certain food, and I'll eat like half, and I'll leave the other half for him, or I'll be like, okay. And I give him, I'm like, you need to... You need to eat this, and he's like, it, he just, whatever, chooses not to eat it right away. And so I know it's sitting in the freezer, or I know it's sitting on the counter, and I'm like, well, I'll just eat a little bit, he won't notice. And but eventually, it's like all gone, and he's like, what the heck? And I'm like, hey, I gave you a time limit, and you know I don't like to share. <laughs> and it's just like, it's, seriously, you can talk to him after class, it's not, I'm not lying. And, but I'm, I'm selfish, and here's the truth, all of us can relate. We're all selfish. Whether we want to accept that or not, we are. And I, what I love about the story of Nehemiah is I'm struck with how unselfish he is. In Nehemiah chapter 2, the verses I have is 9 through 20, and we're going to kind of jump through those 11 verses. And I, like I said, I'm just stuck with how unselfish Nehemiah is. He's a Jew living in a foreign land, and he works super close with the king. He's the king's cupbearer. He's in the king's presence all the time. He has favor with the king. Uh, and it's an amazing life for him considering what's happened in his hometown of Jerusalem, where it lies in ruin and destruction. And he finds this out. 
And he thinks to himself, like, he could have been like, ah, I don't care about what happened in Jerusalem. I'm going to stay where I'm at, and I, I love my life. I have a good life. I'm living it up with the king, literally. So why would I want to care about what's going on in Jerusalem? But instead, he, he starts to weep and pray and fast and mourn for his people, for the, the city that he loved, that he grew up in, and that he was a part of. And he was like, I want to rebuild. I know what God has in store for my people, and I want to be a part of that. I'm not going to be selfish and just continue to live in the lap of luxury with the king, but I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to do something different. Nehemiah sacrificed his comfort for something bigger than himself. He sacrificed his own uh, strengths and his own, like, like I said, living with the king to do something bigger and greater. He knows in his heart he's to rebuild the walls and help Jerusalem be reestablished. Nehemiah is a selfless leader, and he proves that in two major ways. The first way is when opposition arose, Nehemiah stood strong. Nehemiah didn't have to stay in Jerusalem and do what he was doing. It wasn't like the king said, hey, the walls are destroyed and it's burned. You need to go there and fix it. The king had no idea. Nehemiah went to the king, saddened, and was like, my hometown is destroyed and my people are hurting. And can I please go and help them? And the king was like, gave him favor, gave him everything he needed. So if you read, he asked the king to do it. He, the king did not order Nehemiah to do it. Nehemiah asked the king to do it. And Nehemiah, uh, verse 10, it says, oops. When Sambalat the Hornite and uh, Tobiah the Ammonite official heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of, of the Israelites. And then jump over to 19. It says, but when Sambalat the Hornite, Tobite the Ammonite official, and Geshem the Arab heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you are doing, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. These three men rose up in opposition against Nehemiah, and Nehemiah didn't back down. He didn't say, yeah, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with this opposition. I don't want to deal with people, you know, saying bad things about me, coming against me, going to make this task even harder. I'm just going to go back home, live it up with the king, and I'm just going to go on with life. No, Nehemiah stood his ground, and he's like, I don't care what you say. You're going to have no share in what God's going to do, because I know what God's placed in my heart to do, and I'm going to do it. He sacrificed his own comfort, his own um, probably people-pleasing attitude to do the greater good that God wanted. And so when opposition arose, he stood strong. That's a great characteristic of a selfless leader. Number two, when ruin and destruction was all that was seen, he brought hope and encouragement. In Nehemiah verse 13, it says, By night, Nehemiah went through the valley gate toward the Jackowell and the Dung Gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mouth to get through. So I went up the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate. Nehemiah walked through the broken walls, walked through the ruin, the destruction, the despair of the city, and he, could, he walked through it, and he could have just been like, this is too huge. There is no way I'm going to ever get this done. I don't know what God was thinking. I think he was missing the mark a little bit here. So I'm going to head back and live, it, live with the king and just go back to my normal life and not worry about this. No, he walked through. He felt saddened. And he knew he could make a difference. He rallied the people up. In verse 17, it says, uh, Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the uh, gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king had said to me. Nehemiah rallied the people together. These people were living in a state of sadness, of despair, of depression, because their city has been ruined and they had no way to rebuild it. They had no leader who was willing to sacrifice and be selfless to help them to rebuild what God wants them to, where God wants them to live, the temple of God. And Nehemiah said, no.